Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Firstly, an apology once again for the lack of updates on the MZ. It's been weeks and weeks and weeks, and so I apologize for that. What started off as a will it run type video has turned into will it ever run again kind of a video. So a uh, bit, bit, uh, bit bigger than I was expecting. Anyway, hopefully uh, this will be a bit more of a meaningful update. As you can see, we've got a fairly fundamental issue at the moment. The engine is out of the frame. And those of you who watched the previous episodes will understand why. So let's dig in. Okay, guys. Right, uh, as you saw just now, obviously the engine's out of the bike. It's on the on the bench, as you can see. Bench such as it is. Um, head and barrel are off, so I could have a look at the crank. If I pulled up and down, not so much the side to side, but if I pulled up and down uh, on the Conrod, you could feel the, the hint, the smallest hint of play. Now, there shouldn't be any at all from what I understand, but you could just feel the slightest be really, really pulled on it. Um, and I thought, well, I could also see a bit of rust on the crank web, so I thought that seems like just taking too much of a risk to put the new um, or the recon barrel and the new piston rings and the head back on, only to find the crank goes um, a little a little time after. It didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me to to um, not dive in a little bit deeper, even though it's something I haven't done before. But um, it's a good learning opportunity, I think they call it. Um, so it's taken me a long, long time to get this far, and so apologies again for the for the lack of updates because loads of bits are required and tools, and it's all become a bit of a mission if I'm honest and this is about the third take I've done of this because I keep finding different places on the box which I'm about to unpack uh, where it's got my name and address on it I don't really want that showing on YouTube so as I say first off a bit of a uh, unboxing to start us off um, in honesty this has taken so long to come through from Germany I can't remember what's in here and what's not apart from one of the main obvious things but um, so you can have a little bit of an unboxing and then we're we'll go from there Always use the right tool, obviously, for the job. Sorry if that's deafening you. Put that down before I damage someone. Right. Lots of the inevitable. Okay, so we have a puller. And buried in the middle, the heavy part. And that's the crank, which I won't be getting out just this just yet. That's the crank. Get more bubble wrap. Uh, one of the special tools, of which there are many, the experts will know. Gasket set. A parcel parcel, this. Jig for the gearbox. Or gear set, should I say? And good quality bearing set, SKF. Can't really skimp on those, and lest I throw it away, another tool of some sort. Oh, right, just something that wraps around the gearbox sprocket with a little T bar. I know you can make this up yourself, um, easy enough, but frankly, by the time I've bought the various bits and bobs to make it myself, um, because I haven't got a huge amount of tools, I haven't got a huge amount of spare bits and bobs just floating around. So things like this, to be honest, it makes it's more cost effective for me to buy them and rather than knock them up myself. Once I've got a few more bits and bobs around, then absolutely I'll, um, uh, I'll have the spares, if you like, to do it myself. Right, okay, so that's a brief unboxing. What I'm going to do now is going to tidy away a bit, put 
what I don't immediately need back in here and then we can start um, start trying to get this engine apart which I'm fingers crossed won't it won't fight me too much um, the guys on the forum so thanks to all the guys who offered their advice for free on Facebook forums that's really really appreciated and uh, one guy who's um, Joe who I'll give a proper mention to in the description below um, has been an absolute star and in the post at this very moment there's some um, a whole t set of tools which probably encompass some I've already bought but he's, he's promised to send me a whole set of tools that will help me with the rebuild and frankly that's going to make my my life a whole heck of a lot easier so a big shout out to to Joe for that it's really really appreciated I know most people don't like lending tools out so a big shout out to Joe for that. Right, let's put this all back in. So crank seals, head, various bits and bobs. All good stuff, all good stuff. Plonk that gently back in there. And all of this. Okay, let me tidy up and then we'll cut back to the engine. Okay, so we start looking to take out the taco drive and the oil pump so we can get this side of the cover off. Right, okay. No, bigger than 20. Bigger, they said. Bigger. Okay. It's been silly now. The big one's missing. Clearly. Okay, so we've got the side cover off, the crankcase cover off on the uh, left-hand side, near side. That came off fairly easily, no great problems there. Nothing really here so far to cause us any concern, so we're going to dig a little bit deeper. Okay, so after lots of struggle, this clutch, finally we've got it off. Finally, it's taken a lot of work, a lot of... Uh, tension basically you put on here on this bolt to uh, crack the the clutch free so lots of molly grease and a rattle gun on the top to get it off but finally we're in a position to take it off so very gently put that down there for now and start working away getting the rest of this side uh, these gears off okay so after that slight intermission you can see that we've made a bit more progress here. What I found out is that I needed a few more tools than I thought I would so I had to nip out and get some uh, bigger ring spanners because the largest one I had only was 19 I think and I had to go out and buy an impact driver, I had to go out and buy some pullers etc etc etc. So where are we at the moment? Well we've got the well we've got the crank off Where's the crank at the moment? Crank's uh, left somewhere. Uh, we've got the primary gear, which usually sits here. That's off. And so all that side is kind of ready for the cases to be split. If I just flip it over to the other side. So yeah, on the other side, we've got the uh, uh, alternator. It sits here. Uh, we've got that off. Again, we had to uh, just detach it get a fairly hefty uh, M10 bolt. M10 bolt, I'm using one that's 105 mil long. I think it's, I was advised by Rob, main man Rob, um, that it need to be over 70 mil long. But I've got one that's 105 long and that's absolutely fine. That winds into this threaded portion here and as you wind it in, it starts to push on the end of the crank and that forces the uh, the alternator to come off. Someone tell me that's the dynamo in a minute, but the, the thing that charges. Uh, this is the section that sits on top of here. Donk, it goes like that. 
and then um, so that's got this area clear for disassembly one <laughs> one thing perhaps I'm, maybe someone else hasn't already pointed out to me thus far is that one of the key things you should do before doing any strip down engine work like this is to clean the blooming engine before you start because you get in a hell of a mess <laughs> everything's just covered and it's just really unpleasant so first lesson i've learned from doing this if you're going to do something similar to this deep thoroughly degrease the engine before you break it down it, it's so much easier and so much more pleasant to work on it really is right so what i'm going to do next is get one of the tools to hold the sprocket take that out take the neutral switch out and i've got to take some rubber bungs out around here somewhere and then we can start taking out the uh, flathead screws that will allow us hopefully with good luck and following wind to start to look at separating the cases and that's what we're trying to get to today to have a look get in there and see what the crank look like looks like and see if it's really as bad as i suspect it is okay one moment please Tighter than a tight thing. Right, mind your ears again if you haven't already lost all vestiges of your hearing. Come on, find the. Aha! Speed three never fails. That off. Chewed up washer. Nearly off. Oh, mercy sakes, go on. Find me my day. Newly modified use of tool. Off. Oh, it's not complicated, sure, is it? Hey! And, oh dear God. Right, okay. Mucky sprocket off. It's pretty well toast. Should we have a clean up in here before we find the next steps? I knew it'd be dirty. If I knew it was dirty, why didn't I do something about it before I started pulling it apart? Good question. Right, let's have a quick clean up. It's a little bit cleaner in there, if you can see. I haven't got the best of angles on it, I'm afraid. I'm trying to get hold of a better mount for the camera so we can have an overhead shot for this sort of stuff. So if you are feeling flush and you want to buy me a coffee, as they say, there's a link in the description. And anything that you're kind enough to donate will be 100% of that will be ploughed back into this sort of stuff. And I'd be eternally grateful. So for those of you who've already done that, thank you very much. Right. Okay, don't wander off anywhere, are you? Oh yeah, there it looks. It looks, it looks. I thought it was a little washer or something, so that's just a little congealed grease, I think. There we go. Come on. It's always one, isn't it? I need to clear my bench. It is a mess. Okay. Don't do the usual thing of tipping it over. Okay, some rust on the back of that. I'm not quite sure how important that is. Yeah, pretend we didn't see it for now. Little shim here. 
and out with it. Okay. Just for light, you can just uh, do it with some rust on there. Um, as others always say, I've got a load of plastic bags I put to one side. It's filthy, but not too desperate. I can't feel any play in this bearing, but I've got a whole bearing set, so the whole lot's getting, getting replaced. Yeah, little spots of corrosion on there. This is what I was expecting, unfortunately, when I dig into this, seeing bits of corrosion in things because it's been sitting so long outside. Okay, it is what it is. Right, now we've got to carefully move this neutral switch, which is just there, I don't know if you can see it, it just sits there, so it gets absolutely plastered with all the oil and grease from the chain. Right, let's find a, obviously you're not going to use a, any sort of power tool to take this out, so just chew the plastic or shoot it straight off. One sec, and as luck would have it, we've already got a 13 on the uh, it's almost falling out. It's novel for this engine. I suppose being plastic, you can't put a lot of torque on it. How refreshing. Is it going to go boing across the room? Hopefully not. Okay. Yep, little plunger. Fine. Put it in your pile of stuff. Excellent. Clear the worst of the goop off it. Okie dokie. Right, three rubber bungs. And it's time to take, hopefully, take out the main screws, of which I think there are about 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Maybe not 14. I thought it was 14. Perhaps there's some hiding under all this goop. Oh yes, 11, 12. We'll find them. We'll soon find out which one I've missed. Right, one moment please. Easier to take it off the tripod for a moment. So it's these three uh, rubber grips you've got to just push out. And then we're going through and taking out all those uh, screws that hold this side of the crankcase in. Uh, or the, this. Uh, the two crankcase halves together. I have forgotten, where is it, where is it, where is it? I need to take this bolt out here, which I should have done earlier on in the process, but I forgot to do that. So that's what I'm about to do now. Just got to pop you back on the tripod. So it's coming. Let's hope so. Answers on postcard if you can tell me what these do. Oh, just hide the screw holes. Really cunning, eh? Hey? Cunning plan. Where's my new favourite tool gone? My favourite new tool. Is that the right size bit in there? No, no, we need a bit. You're going to need a bigger boat, as I used to say. Who remembers what film that's from? All of you, if you're similar to me, I would hope. Right, don't wince, big hammer moment. Uh, where should we start? Let's start at the beginning, I guess. Slightly. Slightly nervous. 
first years. Had a bit of a bad experience with an old one from Halford many moons ago. Loosen off, this is all good. If we can get to them all, we'll be all right. cases because that will spoil my day. So gosh, here we go. This is interesting, isn't it? Might think of something else. Hmm. That's exactly what I'm going to do there, I suspect. Have I got something bigger than that? Excuse me if I'm in your way. Oh, don't chew up on me, don't do that. You move, I heard you. Don't start. That's a good girl. Am I the only one who took some of my bikes? Hope not. I'd rather be certified probably before the end of the week. Ah, that's a nice click sound, that's all I hear. of this gunk there should be where is it in there there's one so is that a screw let's undo it okay no more in all the gunk Ugh, lovely okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven lost track one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Got it, thirteen, fourteen, missed that one there. And amongst all the goo. No, no, don't. Ah, be it. I was going to say, don't be that one that doesn't move. Alright, hopefully. Hopefully, that's an uneventful. All right, we're going to need a bit more on this. Feel free to skip forward at this point if you wish. Oh, that one's still tight. Okay, that's loose. That's loose. That's loose, good. That's loose. Oh. It's super critical to go around these in order, but oh, I, should, I should have done it in a cross hatch, but hopefully not. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments down below. John, you just killed your crankcases and you need a new engine. Okay, there's that one there, isn't it? Mm, it's all the garbage. Okay. So I just keep going round and round until they're all out.
Okay, so all the screws are out. I haven't taken the oil drain out, most of the oil's out anyway, that's fine. I need to take this little beast out, which is the, I think it's the neutral selector, or whatever they call it. Oh, don't do this to me, come on. Oh, where's my stuff adjuster number 1A? There it is. Put your fingers in your ears. There you go. Be careful here, I'm told lest the bits go flying everywhere. If anyone can do that, it'll be me. Okay, so there's the spring and hiding. There's a the little ball bearing. Let's see if we can do that to make an appearance. What's the best thing? That's a no. Come on. No, that was to dump some manky oil, but it doesn't want to cough up the ball bearing. Great, that's helpful. Nothing to see, nothing just fell, off, fell over or anything in my high-tech engine stand, always well. Well, I can't find anything in there, I mean, there's supposed to be a ball, it ain't got one. And not sure, not sure what to make of that. The spring on the plunger looks like it's worn flat so I don't know whether it has been run without a ball in there perhaps someone took it out thinking it was the oil drain gearbox oil drain plug as tends to happen I would imagine ball pinged off and they just popped it back in and hope no one would notice maybe that's it okay so that's out that's out most of the oil is out we've got to do the bolt at the front and then we'll have a go at lifting the cases which will be fun and games right bolt at the front Seizing me up. Yep, yeah, that's cool. Oh, no corrosion there, blimey. Bit of a shocker. And I can see the thing in the jig. Sleeve that is in there. Now, what might we use? 
used to drift that out with. Any sensible person would have some kind of drift, wouldn't they? So another brief intermission where I go off and go get some more bolts and nuts and washers um, running into town. Right, so this is the bracket that um, we also used to get the clutch off. This is universal brackets, or universal, it's a multi-use uh, bracket for doing a number of jobs, getting the engine apart. As you can see, we screwed in here and here into the cases, and then we're reusing the clutch puller. Um, that's got a lip on it, so it's sort of gripping under here and an M12 bolt which is screwing down onto uh, the gearbox output shaft and this is obviously screwing down onto the crank so the idea behind this obviously is this is uh, this bolt is threaded in the in the tool and as we wind that down that will uh, push down on the shaft and this pushes down on the crank effectively giving a, a pulling moment on here which should uh, separate the cases or well, that's that's the theory anyway right all prepared and ready to go um, that's kind of that target for today if we can actually get this uh, crankcase split and we can have a quick nose inside and uh, from then on we'll do a video about uh, the inspection of what's inside more closely and start to figure out what we need to replace and uh, building it back up again. Okay, so it's put it back on the tripod and we'll start uh, winding the screws away. Oh, sounded positive. Or I just broke something on the other. The idea is you try to do this at roughly the same rate, so it draws it up equally. Yeah, okay, we got some movement, that's good. Yeah, it's certainly coming up. We're getting there. What we're going to find when we get in there, throw any nose. Oh, I know how deep they are, they're threading them. Yeah, it's coming apart all right. I'm worried if it wasn't. Bottomed out, so it's not going any further like that. And you need a bit of judicious uh, This is looking interesting. Okay. Somewhere. Move this out of the way, because I'm going to drop this somewhere, I can see that coming. 
she makes some space. Always works with a tidy bench, gents. Or working complete madness because your bench is about four foot long in my case. Let's move various bits and bobs to a safer place. So the crutch bits. Come on, oh, a crank's coming up. Oh, that's handy. Crank must come up rather than stay down. That's rather unfortunate. Okay, pause for thought. Okay, so what I've done is just um, put a little bit more packing. I put some old pennies under here because what's happening is you can see it's coming up, so we split it, which is good. Um, but I can't get I couldn't get enough push down on this one, so it's starting to lift too much at this end and not move on this end. Anyway, so let's use the right tool. Way tool anyway. Because it's Come up more this end than this end, so just kind of straighten or easing that. Here we go. What we're effectively doing is we're pushing the crank down through the right hand side of the crankcase. It's still not level, so we'll ease this side down a bit. You'll probably hear a clonk in a minute as the crank drops into the other side of the other crankcase because I think it's popped out of the left hand side. You can feel it's about to go clunk. Yep, leveling up. Are you point where we can lift it off? Oh, I think we are. We're very close to it anyway. Right, let's. It's looking kind of equal. We've got a bit more depth to go here that we can drive this down, so hopefully it'll give us enough. Make sure that's going the right way, of course. Yeah, I know that's a ratchet. Why did I lift it off? Hmm, feels like it's gone free actually. It's all gone very loose all of a sudden. Kind of shows you how loose. Okay. Oh, one side, huh? Okay. Time for a big reveal, I think. What's it going to look like inside? Good, bad, ugly. We don't quite know. Don't lose uh, the pennies, don't worry about the pennies. Okay. Right, what do we got in here? Oh, that's about to fall out. Let's take this off, I think. Before we start getting you in here. Don't worry too much about finding pennies in the crankcase. I don't think that was the issue. All right, getting my head in the camera.
just going to unscrew this so I can deal with it a bit more easily. The framing today isn't particularly great, I apologise, I'm kind of running out of space, etc, etc. Should I fast forward this? I think I'll fast forward this a bit because it's a bit tedious or it's not much when you wind out the thumbnail. out the way, park it over there in the pile of debris. Thank you, cheers. Okay, so this is going to be for some cleaning up. The fun game of getting that uh, blind or bearing and blind hole out, so apart from the official tool, which I don't think you can get if you've got any ideas of how to get that out easily. Please drop it in the comments below. I've seen a couple of people put self tappers in between the races and wake it on there. But uh, If I uh, I'll show you this, then I'll, I'll turn this around rather than I'll show you. Now, if you haven't been watching, uh, let me just take you off the camera, off the tripod rather. Okay, so for those of you who haven't been watching from the start, the reason this engine is, is in bits, apart from the fact the top end was seized, um, was because water got down uh, into the engine and it had been standing a long time and outside uncovered unfortunately and what I think happened is that water dripped down the throttle cable into the carb and then obviously from the carb uh, into the top end of it or into the barrel and then it's worked its way uh, down into the, to the crankcase. Certainly the cylinder and the piston were, were um, certainly the cylinder was completely shot so, but, and I didn't know quite how bad it would be in here. Sorry, I was trying to point and look at the same time. But just running this round, if the camera will pick it up or the phone will pick it up. But it, oh. <laughs> it feels shot, basically. And if we look on the... You can see here, um, not particularly clear there, is it? Let me see if I can get the crank out and then we'll have another look. 
Okay, so uh, trying to get you the best shot here I can. So remarkably, the actual uh, big end doesn't, well, it hasn't spewed its guts out, so to speak. And I thought initially it might be okay. It feels fairly smooth, but if I give a good, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's definitely, I was always told that if you can slide it slightly that way, in that plane, it's not so much of a problem. There's a little bit of give on it there, but in the, if you kind of pull it up and down this direction um, and you can feel any movement, then it's, you can just hear that knocking. So even if that fit, doesn't, it doesn't feel gritty, it feels smooth enough, but, I think it's uh, after 32,000, excuse me, leaning from the camera, after 32,000 plus or whatever, I think. And given the fact that that's apparent on the... You've got rust or some sort of uh, corrosion here. Well, it's obviously going to be rust, isn't it? Whereas obviously that's been sitting at the bottom of the engine. Yeah, look at that. Look, there you go. That's obviously what's been sitting at the bottom. And I know you might say, well, that's okay because that's not a bearing surface, it's running anything or anything. But I don't know about you, but I'm not going to be happy running that um, around in the inside of the engine. You only need a bit of that to flake off. It's going to fry everything else. So, because if you want to ring me up or bring me up if you want to uh, drop a message and say no john actually that could you know you can clean that up and put new a new big big ending get someone to press fit it all up and it'll be good to go again then cool that's fine um i've got another crank ready to go so that's what i'm going to do so what i'm going to do i think is i'll just spin you up here Lift you up there again. This one is this main is it just sounds dry and gritty. So there, that's obviously what's taken the the. Uh, don't know what I'm talking about today, do I? I think that's what's taken the brunt of the water, or the thing that's mainly um, killed by the water. Of these the main. That's just horrible. <laughs> that is horrible. You can't feel me playing it, but it's just just grim. So um, we've got all the bearings. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to clean everything up, get the gearbox out. Uh, the slight concern there, as you can see here, there's kind of look, looks like a bit of emulsified oil in here. It's got some water in there. So I need to poke my head in here. Excuse my head. I'm just looking to see if there's any sort of obvious rust in any key point, points, but nothing immediately obvious, but obviously need to take it out and have a good play. But um, yeah, so what I'll be doing next, that kind of gives us a, a sort of breaking it down, getting it into bits. So obviously it needs new um, mains, the new crank in there, um, all new bearings that's going to be the next next video or fun and games but what i need to do is i'll take the gearbox cluster out put it in the stand i've got over there and then it'll be a, a complete clean because obviously this is filthy inside and out and uh, then really a question of having having a nose through the gearbox we'll probably ask you guys for a bit of guidance as if as if say so does this look okay or not um but yeah sorry i'm prattling um yeah so i'm going to round it up for today um suspicions are pretty much correct possibly save the crank if you if you clean the the webs up to get rid of the surface rust and put a new big end in it um certainly the mains need doing oil seals obviously inspect the gearbox cluster for any damage or any rust or any, anything like that that is obviously going to cause a problem and then it's a question of um basically putting it all back together again so Okay, thanks for staying with me if you're, if you're still watching at this stage. Thanks so, so much for all the support. 
if you want to see the next one where we actually get into the uh, <laughs> the further investigation of the gearbox and starting to put it all back together again and seeing if she'll actually run please subscribe uh, if you like it click on the like if you don't like it if it's too boring or there's something you want to feedback that's not so great for you please let me know down below i'm all ears and i'm more than happy to hear all the feedback the good and the bad because that way it makes me uh, improve on the next one so thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one cheers guys